Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a chalkboard background and a chalk outline effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions that I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. Now let's name this uh, chalk effects because we're doing some chalk effects including a background and the actual chalk effect. And you need to have the width and height exact for this beginning part of the tutorial or things won't look exactly the same. So let's start with a width of 1024 pixels and a height of 576 pixels. Resolution is 150 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color 8-bit. Background contents does not matter. We'll be changing that very quickly. Our color profile is Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels is the aspect ratio we're working with. Let's hit create and we are now ready to begin. And it looks a lot smaller than my normal ones because it is a lot smaller than my normal tutorials. Now the first thing that we need to do after we have created our new smaller image to work with is we need to set our foreground and background colors to their proper colors. Okay, now I've already got them preset, but our foreground color here is going to be 080808, and our background color here is going to be uh, 303030. They are both very, very dark grays. Okay, and then the next thing that we're going to do on our background layers is just going to go up here to filter. We're going to go down here to uh, render, and then we're going to go to clouds. And we now have some clouds on our background that are going from uh, very deep gray to even darker gray. The next thing that we need to do is create a brand new layer above our background layer, and we're going to do our cloud filter once again. So let's go up to filter, let's go to render, and let's go to clouds. We now have two cloud layers and our topmost layer which is uh, conveniently labeled layer one we're going to go to darken we're going to change that to darken so that they overlap each other once we have that we are then going to merge these two together so we're going to hit Control e on the keyboard to merge them down into a single background layer now that we have that done what we can do is resize this to our actual working size for our document. So what we're going to do is go up here to image. We're going to go to image size. We're going to make sure that our uh, width and height are linked so that when we change one, they both will change. Uh, resolution, keep it at 150 pixels per inch. Resample is checked and make it automatic. Now the width that we want this to be is 3840. And then our height will automatically be 2160. So it's 3840 by 2160, 150 pixels per inch. Resample is automatic. Hit OK. And we are now blown up so big we can't see the entire image. Now we can fix that by hitting Control and 0 on the keyboard to make our image fit our screen. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to go and open a scratches uh, texture. Now I have a link in the description below to the exact scratch texture that I am using for this tutorial. Feel free to download it. It is free. Uh, or you can go to uh, any image source of your choice and find a scratched metal, scratched wood, scratched concrete, any kind of scratches that you think would look good as a chalkboard background. Okay, so once you have that uh, image, that texture. What you want to do is open it as a separate window in Photoshop. Now you can do that by going up to file, going to open, and then finding it and opening it. You can hit control O on the keyboard to open up the, uh, the texture, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is find it in uh, Windows Explorer or Finder, and then click and drag it and drop it right here on uh, Photoshop. Okay, assign the working RGB if it's not automatic and then hit OK and you will then open up, see it is a separate window, uh, uh, you will open up the image so that you can edit it before bringing it into our chalk effects image. So what we're going to do first is we'll get, we need to remove all color. So the way that you do that is you hit Control, Alt, and Shift, and the letter B on your keyboard that will bring up the black and white uh, uh, dialog box. Just hit OK. We just want it to get down to black and white. Uh, once you have that, 
The next thing that we need to do is we need to unlock this layer by clicking on the little lock icon, double click on the name, and let's name this Scratches. Hit enter to accept that, and we now have Scratchers. What we need to do is we now need to duplicate this layer, our desaturated Scratches layer, to our chalk effects image itself. So we can just click on the layer itself, drag it over to our chalk, and just drop it right there. Now depending on the size, you may need to resize it or it may already fill the screen. Uh, in my case, I need to resize it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it up to the upper left hand corner, and then we're going to hit Control T on the keyboard to bring up our transform tool. We're going to drag the bottom right hand corner all the way down to the bottom right hand side of our big image. We're then going to hit Enter on the keyboard and we now have it filling our image. Once we have done that, what we need to do is set uh, our scratches layer mode to soft light from normal. So let's go down here to uh, soft light and then we are going to change its opacity to only 80% like so. And we now have everything that we need there uh, done for our foreground and background for our uh, uh, chalkboard but it doesn't look exactly right and that's because it's missing the erased chalk on top of all of this. So what we're going to do here is we need to first set our foreground and background to their default colors of black and white and we're going to do that by hitting D on the keyboard uh, over here. Okay once you have press D on the keyboard, then what we're going to do is we're going to flip our foreground and background by hitting X on the keyboard to make our foreground white. Okay, once we have done that, we're going to create a brand new layer on our layers palette, and we're going to go down here uh, at the bottom of our layers palette to the create new layer. Uh, we're going to create a new layer, and then we're going to name this layer as erased chalk, because, well, not chackle, chalk. Uh, because that's what we're going to put onto this layer. Now, I like to name my layers so that I can find uh, each layer when I need to, and I always need to later on. So here we have our erased chalk layer. Now, the way that we're going to get our erased chalk layer, there's many different ways to do this, but the simplest and easiest is to download a free um, Blackboard uh, uh, brush set. Now I have a link in the description below where you can download this free set uh, and then you can install it. Now the way that you install it is you go to your brush presets, you go to the little uh, hamburger like icon up here and you go down here to load brushes. Then you hit load, you find the brushes and the ones that I'm using is 20 blackboard brushes. Then you hit load. Now I've already got them loaded so I'm not going to uh, to hit load again but there you go. You just hit load and then they will show up over here. So let's hit B on the keyboard to bring up my brush tool, or you can go over here to the brush tool on your tool palette. And then uh, under brushes here and brush presets, under brush presets you will see at the very, very bottom are your new 20 uh, blackboard brushes. Click on this bottom one here, okay, which is brush number 20, blackboard 20, okay, and once you have clicked on that, you can close the uh, brush preset. And well, before we even do that, we need to zoom out a little bit. So let's go to our zoom tool over here. Okay, hold down Alt on the keyboard and then click and zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the image surrounding, uh, of the uh, workspace surrounding our image. Uh, then go back to your brush tool and you've got your brush selected. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure our mode is on overlay for our brush and opacity is only 30%, flow is 100%, and the size is too small. So what we want to do is we want to make the size of our brush 4,300. Okay, that's really, really big, and you can get there by hitting the bracket keys on your keyboard when you have the brush selected. So the right uh, bracket key will make it bigger, the left bracket key will make it smaller. So what we want to do is hit the right bracket key until you see 4,300, and you can see we now are filling the entire screen. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to hit uh, click once on the image, like so click and we now have what looks like a chalkboard. Let me get back to my move tool by hitting V on the keyboard and then we're going to zoom back in. You can hit control zero to zoom back in to fill your screen. Our erase chalk layer over here. Okay, we are going to set our opacity here to only um, 70 percent. There we go because we don't want it to overpower everything else. So we now have a, a fairly authentic looking chalkboard 
as a background for our image that we will turn into chalk drawings on our background. Now, this is a very simple effect. Uh, I am going to use a, uh, a free image. Uh, there's a link in the description below where you can download this image and use it, uh, but any image will do. The only thing that you have to keep in mind with whatever image that you're going to use is that it needs to be on a blank background or on a pure white background. That means that you need to either cut out the image that you want using your favorite uh, uh, background removing tool or just have the image taken on a white background to make this effect work. Okay, if it has any other background, it may not work very well. It could still work, but it may not work as well as what you're about to see. So once you have the, uh, the image chosen, uh, you just want to drag it into your uh, chalk effects image. So you just want to drag it over here just like I'm doing, uh, and there is the image that we will be using. Now I'm going to resize this to fill the screen, like so, and then I'm going to hit enter. Now again, I have a link in the description below where you can download this particular image, or feel free to use any image of your choice. Uh, so, now that we have this, we're going to convert it into a smart object. So you right click and you go to convert to smart object like so, and then it is a smart object. Once it is a smart object, we're going to do a few uh, filter effects to it. Okay, the first one that we're going to do is we're going to find edges. So we're going to go up here to filter, we're going to go to um, stylize and then find edges. And you can see that we now have found all the edges of the photograph. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to get rid of, uh, we need to invert the image. Okay, so we're going to hit control and the letter I on the keyboard that will invert the image. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove all the color because for this effect to look as good as it can look, it just needs to be in pure black and white as if it were drawn with pure white chalk. So we're going to hit control, alt, shift, and B on the keyboard again to bring up our black and white. And we're just going to hit OK because it looked fine just as standard uh, black and white. And once we have done that, we are almost done. The last thing that we need to do is go to Filter Gallery. So let's go up here to Filter, then to Filter Gallery. And oh, we can get rid of this guy right here. And the Rough Pastels is what you're looking for. Now, Rough Pastels can be found under Artistic right here. So you got to go to Artistic right there. And you just want to go right down here to Rough Pastels. Okay, now the... Uh, options that we want here are stroke length of 5, stroke detail of 10, texture of canvas, scaling. We want that scaling to be at 70%. We want our relief to be at 10. Light is going to come in from the top left. Now you can choose whichever one you want, bottom left, top left, uh, right, left. doesn't make a difference. Uh, I happen to like top left, so that's the one that I'm going to use here. Uh, invert is unchecked. It doesn't really matter at this point. So once you've got that, you're going to hit OK, and you've got the beginnings of our chalk look, but it's not quite enough. So what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate this layer, and the way that we do that is you hit Control J on the keyboard, and you have duplicated the layer. Then we're going to open up that duplicate layers uh, filters and we're going to double click right here on filter gallery because everything else is going to stay the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to double this rough pastel. So you're going to go down here to the new effect layer and we're going to click on that once. We now have two rough pastels. So what we're going to do, I'm going to hide this right now so you can see the effect. Down here where it says rough pastels, what we're going to do instead is we are going to um, change this to crosshatch. Now crosshatch can be found here under brush strokes, crosshatch, that's the one that we want. Now what we want here is our uh, stroke length here to be 20, our sharpness over here, we want this to be at 18, and our strength we want to leave that at 1. Now as you can see it's beginning to look uh, a little little mussy, a little fussy, uh, and then we want to go up here to Rough Pastels. Turn that back on if you've turned it off to follow along. And Rough Pastels are going to be almost the same as what we already had. Our stroke length is going to stay at 5, stroke detail at 10, texture is still going to be canvas. But over here what we're going to do is we're going to change our 70 scaling, we're going to change that down to 60, and our relief here, we're going to bring that up to 15. Okay, and you can see that it's gotten a little bit more scattered, and then we're going to hit OK. So now we have our two layers here, and we're going to rename these just to make it easier for us to figure out what we're doing. We're going to name this Chalk Outline 1, and we're going to name this guy up here 
chalk outline two, just so that we can keep track of what's going on. And remember two had the cross hatches. Okay. So if I go in there, cross hatch and rough pastels, whereas number one, the bottom one only had the uh, pastels. Okay. So, uh, the rough pastels, I mean. So we've got these two, but we're not seeing our blackboard and they're not looking so great together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select both of them by holding down shift on our keyboard and selecting them. And then we're gonna go up here from normal, we're gonna change this down to screen. And voila, we now have a chalk uh, outline, a chalk drawing on a ch uh, chalkboard, a blackboard, uh, and we are done with this effect. So let's make this full size so you can see just what it looks like at full size. And you can see it looks as if it were it was done with chalk on a blackboard. And we did all this from scratch. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.